two HPCDs. You will need a printout of the circuit in positive, not negative, so you mustn't mirror or rotate it when you print it from Eagle. Um, in my case, I print it out directly from Eagle, Eagle onto a laser printer. Your choice of paper is rather critical, though. Um, I'm not going to mention the brand name. I think we can zoom in on that, and I didn't say anything. Okay. <laughs> Their catalogs is of a very nice thickness, and the glossy is of a quality that I found to have worked very well. <laughs> but very, various magazines, uh, front pages, maybe, this is the one to get. Okay. Uh, PCBs, whatever your choice or budget is. This is FR2. FR stands for flame retardancy. This is second layer. The fiberglass ones are more expensive, but they have better flame this retardancy. This is a synthetic resin bonded board. That thing, yes. More importantly, we don't expect the circuits we're building tonight to catch fire, so fire retardancy is not really a problem. Okay. You need one of these little kitchen sponges, although this one's been abused quite extensively, which just proves that your wife doesn't need to divorce you <laughs> every now and then. You really only need one for every few months. I also got these from the friendly grocer on the corner, but they don't work as well, so toss that up. Uh, let's hide the brand name, acetone, cotton buds. Iron. Guys, this is the iron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you don't have one now, it's time to get a wife. <laughs> this is what they commonly refer to as an iron. iPhone. Iron. Iron. Hot water. Well, cold in this case. Doesn't matter. It depends on how long you're going to soak it. We're going to edit the video afterwards, so that's fine. First and most critical step is, unfortunately, preparation. If the board has any oxidation on it, it will not stick. If it has any fingerprints on it, it will not stick. So that's just the acetone now on the little well, sponge? No, that's just plain sponge. Oh, this is just water. It's abrasive. No, just abrasive. Okay, okay. Dry kitchen sponge. I use a sponge. piece of uh, steel wool. Very fine steel wool. That's okay. why your boards fail. The steel wool, instead of abrasing, actually rubs down um, iron oxides onto the surface. I've tried that. Well, I hope that's a scientific explanation, but I didn't have a very good success ratio of steel wool. Okay. All right. Mustn't be shiny. We get an idea of the surface. Must have little scratches, because actually when you do the toner transfer, it melts into the scratches and fills okay. it and sticks well, nicely. That's nice a toner on a cotton. Hmm? It's 1080. Oh, really? A few gigs of video. Okay. Hold breath. <gasps> this is a more of a degreasing step. Like Dirty, sir. Dead. Is this stuff cheap or what? Uh, as it is 23 rand for that bottle. Uh, hardware shop. Hardware shop. Uh -huh. Now the next step, and I think this is where you also made a mistake with your etching, is to place it face down, fold and pull so it's tight. <laughs> then this one also pull tight and fold. <laughs> and then we place it upside down on the iron board. Iron turned on max. Uh, it's already preheated before we started shooting this video. But wait until the light goes out. Then we and know. Turn off, the turn off the steam, yes. That is rather important. Although this is my regular iron, so it's always turned off. I just mark myself there where the edge of the board is. Because I know I stuck it in the middle, so it's around about there. So what we'll do is we'll place the iron. And try not to iron the cord. On the board. And then a place, I've never measured the pressure, but uh, rather firm pressure on it. Now what this does is it melts the toner. And it heats the board and starts the adhesion process. But um, I'll show you on a scrap piece afterwards. The toner actually gets like a gel substance when it, when it heats up. So this is the point where you, when you lift the iron, you get smudges like Nick had. But must that iron be big enough to cover the whole pattern? Yes, which is luckily fits in your board. Well, You'll otherwise see, you must put a piece of metal or something. Right? I haven't had much success with that. I think what I'll rather do when I get to that big designs is to modify a laminator. Now usually for me, this time is just about enough there. I haven't, didn't time it. Then you leave it just for a second, just to bond. And that was a clean lift, eh? That was a clean lift. No, it must, otherwise it smudges. Mm -hmm. Then the next step, and that's the one that actually does the most of the bonding, is to, uh, let's do it this way around, is to just use this edge of the iron and then go over the board like that. Now, if you look carefully against the light, you'll see the PCB tracks getting highlighted on the paper page. It actually shows up as... I don't know if you can see it from where I am. I can see it coming through. You see it's got a little more gloss where, the, where there's a track. 
can see that's the outline of the board. You almost, uh, if you use your imagination, see it on the video as well. Um, I, think, I think if we... Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take it. Is it hard sure. done when you're doing this motion? I just want to get the light. That's one of those things that you really only can see with the eye. I press hard. Quite hard on it. And then it's oh, to the bucket of water. Just like that. Just like that. And then you leave it for about this 10, 15 to soak. This is after about 15 minutes of soaking, and I've started to peel off this side here. Then all I do is take a little brush. Uh, I think someone made a comment this was a baby brush from when my daughter was very little. So just give it a little rub down. All this does is remove any loose paper fibers that might be stuck in between tracks and everywhere. If you take a fine look, there's a bit of a smudge there, but it's fine. It doesn't touch anything else. Uh, this board came out about as perfectly as I can hope for. This one had a smudge there on the print before I, before we started ironing, so I knew that was going to be a loss. And this one's also just on here, perfect, you can see, uh, which is the paper fibers that just, while the board's drying, so while that dries, it gets there more. Yeah. Don't worry about it. If you look at it carefully against the angle of the light, you'll see it's just on top. What actually happens is the acid uh, saturates that last bit of paper fibers and, and actually saturates. It doesn't cause issues. I've never had a problem with that. So getting it completely clean, you'll start, off, start rubbing off the toner before you get rid of all the paper fibers. We'll just put this on one side. 20 volt hydrogen peroxide. Wait, just turn it in so we can. The lights mm -hmm. are bit hectic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool acid. No. H. Easy acid. <laughs> easy acid. Okay. Okay. Always add the acid. A, A, A. Okay. Now so with the 20 volt, the recipe is quite simple. Equal, equal parts. If you've got 40 volt, it's two parts acid to one part hydrogen peroxide. On the table. It just stands it or what? The, the which one? Hydrogen peroxide. What does it do? It's technically yeah. an oxidization process, not a etching process like ferric chloride. So the oxidi the hydrogen peroxide adds the oxygen component. Okay. Good. Now, your lungs. stick the board in there. Oh, the lighting it. guy needs to check his email. The, the lighting the guy can wait for him. Was it two to one? Uh, one to one with a 20 volt. One to one with a 20 volt. One to two with 40 volt. Okay. One to one. Immediately you see the, the, the etching solution start, start to turn a little greenish tint. And you can see there, it's already on the board. It's, it's oxidizing. You can see it doing things. You can't see it, but it's getting warm already. Um, the, ox yeah, the, the, the oxidization is cool. There's bubbles there, that's also proof of it being oxidized. How long does your gloves last? Uh, Forever. Three, four months as well. Yeah. When you get to a point where you can see there on the edge, it's starting to... The edge has dissolved, you see. So it's, it's already eaten away copper on the edge. This is usually my cue to start agitating the board. Um, just by gently rocking to and fro, you can see it removing ah, copper there on the chest. So just ever so gently rocking to and fro. You see now it's already accelerating that edge movement. Yeah. And you can see the fumes coming up from it as well. And you can just smell it. Take a whip of that and tell us what it smells like. Uh, it smells like pool acid. That's definitely the distinctive flavor. There, there was an interesting question, why not ferric chloride? <laughs> ferric chloride, two disadvantages. One. Either very small containers, like these little plastic bags you get from Communica, or 800 rands for a 2 kilo sack. And then it's pebbles and you have to mix them with water, it's a mess. It stains your hands, it stains your clothing, it stains your work surface, like that pool acid where I had that spill now. Just wipe it off, no problems. Very quiet, that would have been a yellow spot there. And because it's already activated, it would have actually damaged the metal surface I'm working on. And the third thing is disposal. Ferric chloride's correct disposal method is to mix it with baking soda until it forms a paste. Then leaving the paste for a week outside in the sun to dry out and then taking that powdery substance you left over to a proper disposal plant to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. Yeah, we'll be doing that. <laughs> okay. The correct way to dispose of this mix is to pour it in a bottle and take it to a disposal plant. Yeah. In my case, the disposal plant is that section of the corner of the garden there with the weeds. Sometimes, that's a gut feel thing. It's going a little slow. We need a little more oxidization towards the end. Just dump it on there. Oh, jeez, you can see how needed effect. Yes, it's just sometimes just to, to help it along a little. 
Now you can see there between the tracks, it's starting to, to clear yeah. up. Now this should get a little more oxygen into the mix. Nah, you can make bubbles, so you just add a little peroxide every now and then. This same mix, I dispose it because I have kids around the house and I don't want them going to taste it. But you can actually store that in the, in the container. And then next week when you want to etch again, just add another dose of hydrogen peroxide. Um, it actually gets stronger if it's left like that, because that cop the, the actual chemical reaction relies on the copper in the liquid as well. That's why it goes faster the longer we etch. And the second bolt we dump in here will go even faster. Um, so mm -hmm. if you leave it in the garage and just add a little bit of hydrogen peroxide, it actually etches quite quickly and gets quite strong. Later you have to dispose it because it's just too quick. Usually, at this point, even though there is copper, it doesn't interfere with my area. Remember when I cleaned it and I handled it, that's probably a bit of, of finger grease sitting there. But the board's fine. The part that I wanted to etch is fine. So at this point, it's taking it out of the mix. See the steam rising off it? And dump in. The dumping, what it does, it just stops the etching process right there. And you're doing all of that visually, you had to make, does it evenly... You don't get sections where it hasn't etched enough and you've now got tracks that are slightly joined. Yeah, the, the, I've never had a problem with that. By the time you don't see any copper near the board, you can pretty mm -hmm. much trust. That was more from, it's not an etching error, that Show was more the, the, toner, the toner that lifted while we were still ironing it. Okay. But it's fine because it's just my outline for me to know where to cut later. So apart from this one, I think we've got three boards successful out of this one. The surface we worked on, now it's safe. Safe enough that I have touched it. Yeah, and the yeah. you can go. If you've got two Arduinos, you can take from And this is just using acetone. Yes, acetone on a cotton bud. Cotton bud. It gets a little clogged up like that every now and then. Just turn it to a clean bit again. Yeah. Especially if it's bought with a lot of acetone. And that's it. That's it. Voila. <laughs>